Sky Squad, we are back in the building, baby. And we got to talk Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 4, Episode 14, New Atlanta, Old Tricks. Okay? Um, Listen, baby, we back in the building. And we are in the final stretch of the first half of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 4. So, Apparently, according to Carlos King, and I think I think it was Carlos King, but the word is that tonight's episode was the episode before the midseason finale. If you guys watched the nightcap with Carlos King. So next week, we're going to get the midseason finale and then apparently a little bit of a break. OK. So that should be very interesting to see how that plays out. Because I can't wait to see what's happening with the back half of the season based on the tea that we got from that whole thing with Miss Wanda and Melody and Martell and somebody in Miss Wanda's family. We don't know if it was Marcel or not. But anyway, I digress because we got to talk about tonight's episode. Okay. Well, Today's episode, the episode from this week. Okay, I guess I should say, based on when you're seeing this. Now, so the first thing that we got to do is we got to rate this episode on a scale of one to 10. And in order to rate this episode on a scale of one to 10, I got to give you guys my rationale for what that would be. And I debated about this in my head right before I start the video. Every time I rate the an episode, I don't think about my rating until I'm sitting right here in front of the screen. And so I said, self, what are we rating this episode right here? And at first I was going to give it a nine and then a 9.5. And then I thought better on it. Okay. I thought better on it. And I said, you know what? Because of uncle Sam. Okay. And I don't mean y'all's government, okay? Um, I'm going to give this episode a 10, okay? There is an interaction that is so interesting that occurs between Martel and his uncle Sam that really set the tone for this episode. I mean, it was so intriguing to me, the dynamics and the things that Martel was saying. I mean, and the way that Martell was even snapping on production, not to mention the episode was kind of bookended by the conversation between Melody and Kimmy about Miss Melnika with uh, a little, you know what? I'm going to take away, I got to take away a half a point. I got to take away a half a point. I got to take away a half a point. It's got to go down to 9.5. In that conversation with Melody and Kimmy at the end of the episode, last week when I was watching either it was either the episode itself or I think it was Love and Marriage DC, there was a commercial that aired with Melody saying, I could have sworn, I'm going to put commentary as alleged, but I could have sworn it was, Melody saying in the clip that Miss Melnika allegedly wanted Martell. But when we saw this episode, that was not in there. So I'm taking away half a point because I know that what I heard and I know for whatever reason it was taken out of the episode. OK, either that. Or we'll see it next week. But I know I saw it. And chime in the chatterization if you saw it last week, because I know some of y'all did. But it won't in this week's episode, okay? So I got to take away a half a point for that, all right? So 9.5 it is, because I don't like when stuff like that happens, because I want to, when you give me a little bit of, when you give me a taste of something in a preview, I'm going to need the full meal, okay, when I watch the episode. So I got to take away a half a point for that. But anyway, let's get down into the nitty gritty because really we got to get down into the the honest wine um um launch party, okay? So Martel got on his fox fur, okay? Um which I don't know how I feel about it. 
a part of me liked it and a part of me does not. Okay. I felt like I could see the fox head on the end of, I don't really know. I, I can't really tell you how I was feeling about it, but that's not even important at this point in time. Um, His uncle Sam is there. We learned that uncle Sam is essentially Martell's mother's brother, who is the son of Miss Inest, who the wine is named after. So um, for some reason, I could have swore I heard Marceau mention something about having to take his ring out of his pocket. And I'll be, I was wondering to myself, why is your ring in your pocket and not on your finger? I mean, to me, it's like either you're going to wear it or you not. But for what, is, what reason is it in your pocket? Did your finger swell up? What's going on with that? Somebody let me know. Anyway, Martel gets up onto the steps and starts to make a little tipsy type of speech. I guess he tipsy. I don't really know. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't think he know what he's talking about. Later on, he's going to chalk it up to him not being, you know, that big of a public speaker. Although Marceau wonders if it's because he's doing this without the, the, the brains behind most of their operations, which was Melody. But I digress on that. Anyway, Martel calls up all the guys. Uh, Louis, Marceau, Maurice. Then he calls up Chris Fletcher and somebody else. I can't remember the name. Don't call up Uncle Sam, who is the son of Miss Inest and Mar and Martel's uncle, who they managed to listen. It was such a big deal that he was there because they even gave him a little title card when he was introduced. But anyway, he don't call the uncle up there. He mumbles his way through a speech, and then the uncle is mad, okay? Not, I think it was two things. I think it was the fact that the uncle was mad that Martel did not acknowledge him and bring him up, especially being that the wine is named after his mama, and the fact that Martel in his speech mentioned absolutely zero about the woman who he named the wine after, okay? So anyway... During a little chat with Melnika, he's outside and unc uncle comes out to confront Martel because Miss Ines is his mom. And Martel whispers a warning to him, um, which we see on the screen because Martel is still mic'd. OK, you're still mic'd, my brother. And so this was so interesting that he would whisper, don't ever do that on national TV. Now, number one, this is your uncle, but they might be close in age. So maybe that's why he felt like he could talk to him that way. But I just don't like the threats that are involved in this scenario because it's kind of like, don't embarrass me on national TV. And then he goes on to say this. He goes on to say, um, you'll regret it. And Uncle Sam is like, I don't regret nothing, no. And so here's the thing. In my mind, all Martel is going to tell his mama <clears throat> that he apologized to, to Uncle Sam. But if he did, we didn't see it. And I felt like we would have seen it if it had happened. <clears throat> OK. But what we do get is Martel basically kind of threatening the uncle. For approaching him about an issue that he had on national TV. Meanwhile, Martel could have simply said to him, you know what, Uncle, I am so sorry. I, let's go back in there, and I want to correct this situation right now. I need to let the people know that I got Miss Ines' son, my uncle, in the building, and how this would not be possible, you know, or just something to just assuage the situation, or even an, a genuine apology right there in that moment, I think could have sufficed. But what ends up happening is that Martel, as he typically does, sticks his own foot in his mouth and he turns it into something else. And I think the narcissism takes over. OK, and then he makes it about the man embarrassing him on national TV. So then as uncle is trying his uncle is like, listen, bro, I'm out of here. I'm trying to get we good. We good. How about that? We good. Martel, instead of just letting him go and saying, you know what, I'm gonna have to deal with him later because I don't want to make a scene on national TV because I just told him, don't do this to me on national TV. You'll regret it. Now you're going to chase this man down through the party and out the door and down into the driveway where the cameras are following. And so 
at that point, you know, and as you guys can see here, you know, Uncle Sam is like, let me listen. I'm trying to I'm trying to dip like I'm I'm out of here. Like I got to go Bye. OK, but Martel still continues to follow him. And then Martel asked the man, um, do you know who the F I am? And I'm thinking to myself, no, who are you? OK, who are you? Are you just you? And again, the narcissism, it, it's the narcissism of it all for me that I just feel like, bro, like this scene was so telling to me about his personality that he would even deign to speak to his uncle that way. And let me say this, you know, I think, and again, I said the uncle felt a certain type of way because I don't think that the uncle felt like, that was another thing. Oh, there was another thing that the, that Martel said to the uncle. He says, he, he told uncle, he was like, where is the respect? And uncle is like, what? What are you, you talking about respect to me when you didn't even bother to mention my mother in your speech of what when, when you running around here naming wines after her not only that but you didn't even acknowledge me in the building when you're bringing up all of the rest of these people that you filming with like no nah, bro that's not cool and i do feel for um uncle sam in this moment because i kind of feel like i get it you know that's that's his mom like it would be a different story if he was just another relative and it wasn't his mom but that's actually Uncle Sam's mom. So to me, I felt like he was he he definitely was legitimate. It, 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 his feelings were legitimate. Um, And then Martel then ends up telling the camera crew not to come down there where they are when he's filming. Well, here's a couple of things, though, Martel. Number one, you're in scene. Number two, you are still mic'd. We can hear you. Number three, you are contractually obligated to film this show and honestly i will tell you guys the truth in some instances when you sign a reality tv contract the only time you can get out of filming a scene is if you need psychological or uh, uh, or some type of like there's some grave or reason that you need to um end a scene otherwise they have the right to continue to film you as they see fit I'm a, and I tell you that from personal experience. I tell you that because I know the industry. They have every right to continue to filming the scene, especially if something is popping off like this. And it would not have popped off if you had just let the man leave and said, I will deal with this when we are not filming, which is what you should have done. Meanwhile, um, the next day. Oh, no. Let me get to this conversation because. Chris Fletcher grabs all the guys and basically talks about what's going on with Uncle Phil in a certain type of way. And Marceau can also understand why he's feeling that way. But you know what? Who doesn't get it is Maurice. I feel like Maurice be backing up Martel through any and everything. Like, well, oh, my God, he probably was just nervous. And I get that he might have been nervous as well. And I don't want to discredit that because I understand sometimes what that's like. But I mean, you talking about a man that don't have no problem screaming in his in his um ex-wife's face and all kinds of other stuff like that. So it's odd to me that when he gets on stage to talk about this wine that he is so invested in that he don't know what to say anymore. But that's neither here nor there. Basically, they try to tell him like, bro, like that's Uncle Sam's mom. That's why he feel in a certain type of way. And to not be acknowledged and to not even acknowledge the mom is a travesty. OK, anyway, it's the next day the guys are headed out. And I don't know why Martel is in this, you know, this three piece suit as they about to sit down in this Sprinter van heading back to Atlanta. Lewis didn't already left because he apparently had a death in the family for which we are sadly, you know, uh, we do feel bad about. So we are sorry for his loss. But we have to suffer through another Tiffany and Lewis scene where I don't know what's going on. And so for me, I feel like, you know, Tiffany questions him about, you know, what happened in the Atlanta during the trip and, you know, Basically, the majority of their conversation was about the rage room and how he was raging on the fact that he feels sexually frustrated. And she's kind of like, well, listen, if it was that bad that you needed to go rage and all this kind of stuff like that, then you need you needed to have a conversation with me about it. To be honest with you, 
I have so many like questions, unanswered questions, bits of confusion about what actually is or is not going on with um, Lewis and Tiffany and their uh, romantic escapades. One minute you are a very open couple and then, and you're very transparent and you, you know, have this open situation. And then the next minute you don't and somebody in the situation is not getting enough and one person feels like it's transactional. I'm not interested because I don't understand it. This issue just seemed like it came up all of a sudden and I don't quite get any of the dynamics because something about it just feels inauthentic to me. And I want to like Lewis and Tiffany, but I just can't help but shake this feeling that all of their scenes, when they're talking about these things, they just don't ring true. And I cannot explain to you what it is that they do or don't do that doesn't give me the same energy that I feel when I'm watching the rest of the cast of this show. Meanwhile, where is Destiny and where is Stormy? I haven't seen either of them in episodes, okay? Um, somebody riddle me that. Meanwhile, Kimmy and um Maurice catch up, and you know, we learn that Kimmy is like myself. I recharge my batteries alone. Okay. I don't mind being alone. I don't mind having some alone time to, you know, you know, get myself back in the in the swing of things after I've been around people for a bit of time. So I can relate to Kimmy on that. Um, a couple of things that we learn in this scene is that Kimmy learns that Mars Martel called Melnika Melody 1.0 and called Melody uh uh Shari Mel 2.0 and Kimmy is shocked. He talks about them going to a strip club, him acting like he didn't touch on nobody, he didn't caress nobody or whatever. And Kimmy's like, it doesn't matter what you say to me because it's going to pop up on social media regardless. So I'll find out one way or another. They get to talking about Tiffany and, and, and Lewis and their frustrations or whatever like that. And then Maurice, you know, ends up basically saying, well, married people just oftentimes have less sex. And Kimmy says that married people don't date like they should. And that's oftentimes the issue because he feels Maurice feels like, well, when you were just a girlfriend, this they were, you know, you're having sex more. And, and Kimmy's like, well, when I was just a girlfriend, you were wooing me more. OK. And so then this scene is intercut. I always hate when this happens, to be honest with you. I, I think it makes for great TV, but it's very difficult to recap when I'm making my notes because they were intercutting this conversation with the conversation between T Tisha and Marceau. I mean, essentially, you know, Marceau feels like, well, K Letitia doesn't understand why the, why the man had to go to a strip club. And I'm like, girl, you, sh you should know at this point that this that's what they're going to do. Um... But they talk about Lewis and Tiffany's like marriage and basically Maurice goes into not being able to be in a sexless marriage. And he says when he, when people say that they can't believe someone gave up on their family and cheated to get some sex, he says he doesn't really kind of blame them for getting sex someplace else. And she doesn't think that's Letitia doesn't think that fu that's funny. He says, well, if one party in the relationship is not interested in sex, the other partner should be able to outsource it. Um, In my practicality mind, a part of me feels like, OK, well, I mean, that that could make I mean, that could work. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what Tiffany and Lewis should be doing, because for real, for real, Tiffany, if you are so busy and all you want is and you want a baby, you can go. You can have the baby. And then he can get the sex from the third party that y'all that y'all are a legend that y'all are so open and that y'all possibly have or have not done. But according to you on 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 the on the nightcap with Carlos King, that ain't the case. So that's a solution to y'all's problem. I feel like based on what Marceau is saying, but I don't know if they're gonna listen to that. Um, I don't know. Basically. Letitia thinks that every marriage goes through those tough moments. Speaking of Letitia, she ends up going to therapy, you know, and she goes back to the same person that they've been going to. Essentially, the key to this scene is the therapist being shocked to understand because this, they really talk about Letitia figuring out who she is. But Letitia ends up telling him that Marceau went on a trip to Tanzania 
um at the last minute it was a last minute trip that he had paid, that that he just fell into and the therapist is like girl it was last minute that he communicated it to you but it has been something that has been on his mind for a a long time so you need to be able to have confrontation and conversation about the things that make you uncomfortable in your relationship because without that level of confrontation you will not grow and she because she admitted to basically being like uncomfortable about the man traveling to the Tanzania when they were supposed to go there as a family. And to be quite frank with you, I do feel like, you know, if you decide that you will need to go and take a break, I, I do believe that people in marriages should be able to go and travel by themselves and, you know, explore and whatnot. And you should have the ability to fly in your relationship. However, comma. Not this whole last minute trip to Tanzania because a trip to Africa is not a last minute thing. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you that right now, especially if you're going to be doing some of the things that I suspect that he was probably going to be doing. And no, I'm not talking about anything extra extracurricular. I'm just really talking about if you want to plan a trip to Africa, you there is some weeks and thoughts and, 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 and planning that goes into that. No one is just doing that, right? Um, especially if you're going to some place that you haven't been, which I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that he had not been before. So there are arrangements that you need to make. So I totally agree with the therapist. And I feel like Letitia, who, who claims that she's working with Marceau on these things is just making excuses for him. And again, I do see the growth in Letitia. I do see her making the effort to, you know, become more independent and more steadfast in her in her stance, in her in her opinions, and in her marriage, but she still has a long way to go to be. I mean, and that's just being very, very honest, because I do believe that she has issues with the fact that this man went to Africa without her when that was supposed to be their trip that they were going on with their kids. There is something wrong with that, and we can't we can't act like that's not true. So Martell and his mama discuss Uncle Sam being upset, you know, and that's when we learned that Miss um, Uncle Sam is Miss Marlene's brother. And Miss Marlene basically understands that, you know, I understand why she, she's like, I understand why he was upset. You know, that's his mother. You know what I'm saying? That's he's going to feel overwhelmed and emotional about it. And especially if you ain't mentioned nothing about the woman. And you didn't even recognize him when the situation was actually going down. You didn't even bring him up like you brought up the rest of your the the, the clan or whatever. So, um, you know, Martel basically says in the scene that he apologized, which we did not see. So either he lying or um, we just didn't see it. And I can give him the benefit of the doubt because sometimes everything can't make it into an episode. But the fact of the matter is there was too much of this going on and too much of that going on and too much of this going on and too much of that going on for me to for me to think that there that Uncle Sam was going to be willing to listen to anything that Martell had to say in that moment. OK, um, so I don't care what he's telling his mama, but he ain't telling her the whole truth. OK, um, anyway, they recap, you know, all the good times that they had with Miss um, Inest and. You know, Martel even talks about how he, um, you know, how he missed, you know, trying out for the NFL scouts because she passed away. And uh, how and Miss Marlene, you know, ever being the mama is 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 like you, baby, you got a good heart despite everything that you've been going through. But speaking of his heart, Melody meets up with Kimmy. OK, and they recap the Atlanta trip. And Melody wants to know if Kimmy is really okay with Marte with Maurice going with Martel down to the Atlanta. Kimmy, for her part, feels like Melody has been hurt and she thinks that everybody is a cheater. And to be honest with you, I feel like based on what I feel like Melody knows about maybe certain individuals within that group, then I feel like Melody probably has good reason to think that way. Also, with the fact that a lot of those guys had been around when Martel was with the other woman, I believe that that also would lead her to feel the way that she feels. And in my mind, that feeling is justified. But anyway, they get into the uncle feeling some type of way. Melody realizes that it's Uncle Sam that probably felt a certain type of way. And then they get into Melnika being Miss Melnika being the event planner. Now, Melody reveals that... um. 
Martel and Melnika allegedly had a long time friendship and that she ended up being their wedding planner when they was when she was about 22. But Melnika quit after being paid her deposit, which she did not give back, allegedly. And the mother in law had to help plan the wedding. So apparently, Miss Melnika quit after her and Martel and Melnika was all on a three way phone call. And Melnika ended up wanting to put Martel on blast, saying that he was cheating and that he was asking her about her assistant at her office. So Miss Melnika was spilling the tea that Martel was a cheater way back then. But Melody, being 22 and in love, didn't believe it. So um, what we're missing, though, is the part of the conversation that I thought I heard. And again, I'm willing to say I thought I heard, but I feel like I know I heard it last week when they showed them previews that it was said that allegedly Miss Melnika wanted Martel. I don't know why that was left out of the conversation tonight on the episode, but I know I heard it. And again, tap in if you felt like you heard it, too. But anyway, I digress. Mel Melody says that she's at the age now that if she heard, had heard that now, she would definitely have believed it. But she didn't believe it back then. And it's like, wow, man, the idea that even back then when they were first getting together, that this man might have been cheating on her. And then that Miss Melnika was trying to spill the tea and spill the beans, but potentially for her own gain. Baby, that's deep. OK, that is deep. So anyway, next week, we're going to get some couples retreat things going on. I don't know who are going to be there. And then Melody and Martel are going to tape for the first time this season. We will finally see them in the scene together. And according to Carlos King on the nightcap, it is going to be good. So listen, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button, join the texting community. And also listen, listen, come on, go ahead and get your CMOS capsules from Amirin.com. 40% off. We still run a code Laquan, baby, because I still want you to be able to get that good discount. Now, with that being said, I'm going to catch y'all in the next video.